Hi there. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Colin McGuire. Uh, I'm the product lead at the MathWorks for WLAN Toolbox, which our customers use to help design, simulate, and test wireless LAN systems. Um, so in this talk, I'm going to discuss modeling 802.11ax. Um, but before I get into the details, I'd just like to set the scene a little bit. Um, so conceptually, uh, 802.11ax devices communicate over a number of layers. Uh, from the application layer down to the physical layer. And depending on what your interest is in 802.11ax, you might be interested in simulating one or more of these layers. So for example, if you're um, an engineer developing a scheduling algorithm for OFTMA, you might be interested in modeling uh, at the data link or MAC layer. And if you're a PHY engineer working on an equalizer algorithm, you might be interested in simulating this physical layer here. But although you're just simulating uh, the high fidelity one layer in this stack, it is important to consider all the layers um, as part of your simulation. Um, but you don't have to consider them with the same level of fidelity as the layer of interest. You can do what we call abstract these layers to help speed up your simulations. Um, and in this talk, I'm going to focus on the PHY and MAC and talk about some of the, the, the kind of key new features of 802.11ax that are challenging for designers and talk about some of the simulation strategies you can use um, to, to kind of simulate and develop these features. So in this talk, I'm going to discuss three different types of simulation. Um, simulation is focused at the physical layer. So again, this might be if you're a PHY guy developing algorithms and you're looking to explore the performance of those algorithms. Um, I'm going to talk about MAC and protocol simulations, where you might be interested in maybe tweaking MAC, MAC parameters um, to look at the performance of the network. And I'm going to talk about what we call integrated system level simulations, where you're simulating the PHY and MAC together. Um, and this is actually a really powerful simulation tool to allow you to start exploring things like cross layer algorithms. So that might be rate adaptation algorithms, scheduling, uh, multi user MIMO, and OFTMA. So let's begin with talking about the physical layer. Um, so you've already heard in, in the, the previous two talks a number of key challenges at the physical layer in 802.11ax. Um, so I just wanted to, to, to talk about a few of them. This is not an exhaustive list, but just ones I thought would be interesting. Um, so 802.11ax is quite ambitious in terms that it's, it's targeting quite a wide variety of use cases. Um, so for example, it's targeting higher throughputs. So they've added 1024 QAM, which is a high order modulation scheme, which allows you to transmit more bits per hertz through the channel. But to support that higher order modulation scheme, you need higher signal to noise ratios at the receiver. And that's quite challenging um, for a number of reasons, but it's really challenging for RF front ends. Um, so for example, these higher modulation schemes are quite sensitive to RF impairments. That might be non-linearities in your power amplifier um, or imbalances. So it's quite important to be able to, to model these RF front ends to determine the kind of performance limits and how they might interact with something like 1024 QAM. So you might be interested in developing a digital p-distortion algorithm using metrics like EVM, you know, all-band um, emissions, and kind of trading off these kind of values. Uh, 802.11ax also targets outdoor operation. So they've added a number of features like the long guard interval, the extended range um, with some power boosting. But they've also added a couple of, a couple of new little features I'd like to talk about. So to support really long links, where you might have a poor link quality in terms of signal-to-noise ratio, they've added dual carrier modulation. So what that allows is um, for, for one set of bits to be transmitted in two different frequencies within the channel simultaneously um, to create some um, ro robustness there. Um, they've also added this capability of the mid amble. So what that allows is a receiver to essentially track any, the, the channel as it changes over time during a packet. So that's kind of a little bit different to the previous standards where you can assume the channel is stationary for the duration of a packet. Um, so it's even quite interesting that this idea of the channel changing over time doesn't necessarily mean that the, the access point and device are moving relative to each other. It could just be a car is driving past outdoors, which causes this channel to change. So for both of these um, new features they've added, you need new algorithms at the receiver. So this involves modeling links. So perhaps instead of just having an indoor channel model, as you would have maybe had in 11 ac there's now outdoor channel models you need to, to include as well. So that's another um, simulation challenge. Um, the third area I want to talk about is dense scenarios. Um, so as you've heard, um, they, they're targeting basically efficiency and, rather than throughput. 
So it could be in a scenario like this where you have 200, 250 people all trying to use Wi-Fi at the same time, or it could be an IoT scenario where you have lots of uh, sensors looking to use the medium as well. And they've added OFDMA and multi germimo capabilities at the downlink and uplink um, to deal with this. And there's a number of challenges there for, for, for algorithms at the AP and stations. You know, we just heard about the, the timing, frequency, and power pre-corrections provided. So being able to simulate these is very important in your system. So I've talked about some of these challenges. Um, now I'd like to talk about some of the, the simulation strategies you could use uh, to, to simulate these, these, these items. So I have a matrix here which, which um, describes some of the what we call physical layer simulation types you can use. So starting off, we have what we call a link level simulation. Um, so classically, this would be you have a transmitter, a receiver, and you have some sort of um, a kind of impairment model between your transmitter and receiver. So that could be a, a fading channel model. It could be RF impairments, noise, etc. So with this type of simulation, um, what the key characteristics are is it's really high fidelity physical layer modeling. So we're modeling all the bits in the kind of coding chains. We're, all, we're modeling each sample, time domain sample um, after the DAX. And this allows us to explore things like uh, the performance of physical layer algorithms. So you might be interested in developing a, a, an equalizer that tracks the channel using the midamble and using different strategies and potentially using metrics like pack error rate or bit error rate to compare different algorithms um, at different signal to noise ratios or different channel models, et cetera. Now, in this kind of simulation, we've only got two, two devices. So essentially, there's no MAC modeling required. Um, but as we start to increase the number of nodes in our simulation, we do need to start to consider this. Um, so this is where we start to get to what we call a, a phi system level simulation. So as I said, the MAC modeling can be really simple. You know, we can just use really basic clear channel assessment algorithms. Uh, sorry, just basic uh, rules. Um, and we can start to simulate things with multiple nodes like uh, the uplink GoFDMA we just heard about there. And in this case, you might be interested in exploring things like what happens if uh, an access point um, schedules three different users with very unequal MCSs in terms of the packet error rate for each individual links. Now, of course, as we start to go beyond you know, three or 10 nodes to hundreds of nodes, um, if you're modeling this full fidelity at the physical layer, simulation is going to take a long time to run. Um, so there's a number of strategies you can use to, to kind of speed up simulations by what we call abstracting the physical layer or turning down the fidelity of the model. So there's a number of techniques you can use to do this. It might be instead of modeling a full frequency selective channel, you might be willing to just model, a, a, assume it's essentially a flat channel there. Instead of modeling all the impairments and corrections, you might assume they're all perfect. Or you might even go further and just have a purely statistical model of your physical layer performance in terms of a pack error rate for a particular signal to noise ratio. And this is a really powerful technique when you want to start to model above the physical layer to Mac and networks. So let's, let's now move above the physical layer to the Mac and talk about some of the challenges and simulation strategies there. So we mentioned de dense networks as a really important use case for 11 ex And they've added a number of um, uh, features for this as well at the Mac. Uh, one I'd just like to talk about briefly is color coding, which is, a, for me at least, it's a really interesting idea. Um, the idea behind this is it allows frequency reuse um, with, the, with the neighboring networks by allowing a, a device to be aware if it's receiving a transmission that's from its own network or a neighboring network. Therefore, you can manage interference much better within, within the network. But these kind of algorithms require thresholds to be set. So a lot of simulation is required to determine what these thresholds should be for different scenarios. Um, another really interesting area is cross-layer algorithm development. So examples of these are things like multi beam beamforming or rate adaption, where you need to have knowledge of the physical layer and MAC and the operation of both these layers impacts the performance of a system. So what I mean by this cross-layer idea is, uh, an example might be um, OFDMA where, or multi germinal scheduling, where uh, we're making measurements of the physical layer. So that could be things like signal to noise ratio. It could be the other, other measurements of channel conditions. We're potentially feeding that back to an access point, who's then going to beamform a transmission to multiple users. So that whole process of um, quantizing maybe the information we're sending back, any delays associated with feeding back that information um, are really important to model as well as the actual physical layer algorithms and processes. 
Um, the third area I'd like to mention is coexistence. Um, it is coming. We know that LTE and 5G variants of those are going to be operating in bands in or besides 811 ax So it's important to start considering, you know, how, how are these interferers going to impact my 811 ax network performance? So that's a really interesting simulation area. So now I've talked about some of the challenges, let's talk about some of the simulation strategies for this. So with all these kind of simulations, we're modeling the Mac at a really high level of fidelity. And what we can do is we can turn up the fidelity of our physical modeling to really suit the application um, where we're targeting. So at a simple level, we have what we call a Mac system level simulation, which is really purely focused on the Mac. So we have a very simple physical layer uh, model underneath. So this could be, as I said, just assuming no frequency selective fading, just a flat channel, and having uh, essentially a lookup table for SNR to pack error rate or bit error rate. And you're just using large scale path loss essentially to, to model links between devices. And then the advantage of this type of simulation is it's very quick to run. But of course, you're trading that off against the, the actual um, quality of the simulation. But it's a really powerful tool because what it allows you to do is to quickly iterate over different ideas and understand how, in a course level, how certain design decisions might impact your performance of your network or algorithms. So an example might be if you're trying to set uh, these color thresholds. Uh, in a network, you can try different various different parameter sets very quickly um, before going to more detailed complex simulations. Now, of course, this really abstracted physical layer isn't suitable for, all, for studying all aspects of the Mac. So going back to our example of cross-layer algorithms um, with multi-user MIMO beamforming, now if you, if you need to schedule users at different parts in frequency, you need to have a re reasonably uh, complex phi model and channel model, which gives you signal-to-noise ratios at different parts in that channel. Um, so similarly, in, but we still don't potentially have to simulate the full physical layer, as in simulate all the bits, all the samples. We can still have just statistical models, but maybe just focus on high fidelity modeling of the channel model. Um, this is what we call an integrated system level simulation. So here we're modeling the phi and the Mac with a fair amount of complexity. Um, the other interesting thing about this kind of simulation is instead of, as I said, instead of modeling every sample, you might use what we call discrete event simulation where you can essentially schedule events in your simulation over time to allow you to skip over large periods of dead time uh, to speed up your simulation. This type of simulation is also suitable for modeling coexistence. So the same strategies I talked about for how you can abstract the physical layer in 811 ax you can use to abstract the physical layer in 5G NR as well and look at what happens in individual subcarriers in 811 ax based on NR interference, for example. Now, of course, you might be interested as a physical layer guy, um, what happens to your equalizer algorithm in 811 ax when there's an NR interferer there? So you still might want to do that full, full fidelity phi modeling. And certainly, it is possible to have a simulation where you're modeling full fidelity MAC and protocols, as well as all the samples and bits in the channel. Um, and in that case, you get a really clear picture of what's going on in your performance, but you're sacrificing simulation speed for that. But it's certainly possible to think of some really interesting simulation architectures where within your network of hundreds of nodes, you maybe have a select number of nodes where you're willing to, to spend that simulation time and model them with a high level of fidelity. And then maybe other nodes in the network, you're willing to uh, abstract some of the physical layer away to speed up that part of the simulation. So that concludes my talk. Um, just in summary, I talked about some different types of simulation, physical layer, Mac and protocols, and what we call integrated system level simulations, um, and how they can be used for 811 ax um, So if you're interested in finding out a bit more about these different types of simulations and seeing some demos of how you can simulate aspects of 811 ax using MATLAB and our tools, we have a booth outside and we're willing to talk to you. So thank you. Is there any integration, uh, like, uh, th are these modules can be integrated with the USRP boards? So, um, so it's certainly possible to, we, we, we can sort of generate, for example, waveforms, which you, do, you can then, mm. uh, as a baseband vector that you could pass to USRP to generate waveforms. And likewise, you could capture waveforms with USRP and mm. process them. Um, is that kind of what yeah. you're asking? Is yeah, the, is the, uh, like, uh, 
GNU Radio has this already integration with them, so that I can I can use those modules and simulate the my uh, simulate my uh, entire experiment scenario. Okay. But uh, when I write code for uh, lab view, or I mean not lab view, uh, math works, sim uh, simulink, or even math labs. Uh, I don't have any uh, module that can, through which I can integrate it with the USRP board so that I can collect the results. Okay. Well, it would be best if we speak afterwards and we can talk about this specifically. One more question. Can I change your question? Sure, yeah. 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 I had a question regarding the MU MIMO that we discussed before this. So the one problem that we had with MU MIMO is was the link was always dominated by the weakest MCS. Has something been done to take care of that in OFDMA? Do you want to answer? I can, I can Do you want to answer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe just put on mic again. Philip can also help me if he's uh, Where was MU MIMO uh, impacted by the lowest MCS? Uh -huh. um, in what sense? Because MU MIMO could also carry different MCS for different users on the downlink. You mean the duration of the packet right, limited right. by the lowest Precise, one, yeah. precise. Yeah. Uh, which, which one? Sorry. Duration I, of the packet. So this, remember the, du the duration is, is in the control of the AP in the sense that it can pick the size that it wants to transmit. The only catch is that, of course, you want to keep the PPDU duration the same. So are you referring to that limitation? Yes. That limitation will still continue in OFDMA because we want to keep the PPDU duration still the same. Yeah. So if you have different MCSs, you have to juggle with the sizes and some amount of padding will also have to be there. Now you don't want to make it too inefficient for somebody. That problem remains. You basically have the RU allocation flexibility uh, similar to an MU, MU MIMO stream allocation flexibility. You will have an RU allocation flexibility. Yes, so, so pick the right size RUs. So Pick the, the right there's, size. Another, there's, there's another variable you can play with. You said the RU size. So for the, the lower MCS, you could allocate a larger RU size. And for the higher MCS, you could allocate a, a smaller RU size, size to try and balance the duration. Okay, yeah. okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you.